Have you ever wondered how one of these tiny little things are made? What I've got here is a smart ring, and more specifically, this is the Ultra Human Ring Air Smart Ring, and it's something I've already reviewed a couple of times on this channel. But what's exciting about today is I'm down here in sunny, very warm Texas, where I'm checking out Ultra Human's brand new factory and what goes on behind the scenes to produce one of these smart rings. So today we're gonna peel back the curtain, head inside the factory and see all of the different assembly processes and everything these rings go through to come to completion. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you're looking for a full in-depth review of the Ultra Human Ring Air, I'll link that up here or down below. Uh, go check that out if you wanna learn all about the ring itself and all the things it can do like sleep tracking, HRV, all the sensing capabilities and more. But today it's gonna get a little bit nerdy because we're gonna see all the guts in and what what goes on inside here. The Ultra Human Factory, dubbed the Ultra Factory, is located in Plano, Texas. This location was strategically chosen as a central location in the United States to ship all over the country. Currently, this facility produces up to 400 smart rings per day, while Ultra Human's factory in India can produce up to 4,000 rings per day. But the company aims to scale to over 1,300 rings per day by the end of 2025 by implementing more automated processes, because as you'll see, a lot of the steps along the way are manual. The first step of the process revolves around the printed circuit board, or PCB for short. These are special flexible PCBs that can later be manually contoured into the shape of each ring, depending on the size. The PCBs are consolidated into one larger substrate that houses 12 individual boards that are later split up for each ring. The PCBs are first coated in a special solder paste using an automated machine that looks a lot like something like a screen printer used for t-shirts. There's a stainless steel template over each board that allows the paste to spread evenly and only coat the areas desired. After the paste is applied, the boards move on to the component placing machine. The machine can pick and place the tiny electrical components like the SOC accurately at a rate of nearly 10,000 boards per day. The components are picked off larger reels and placed directly onto each PCB. After the components are in place, the board moves into a large oven that looks like something you'd find at a pizza shop. The heat from this oven allows the solder to melt and flow and secure each component in place. After the boards have cooled, they move into the first inspection inspection process, and there's many inspection processes as you'll see. This is an x-ray machine that x-rays each board individually. A technician then pans around the x-rayed image to make sure that each individual component has been soldered correctly and that there were no mistakes during that automated process. Up next is yet another inspection stop where the boards are then inserted into a special 3D scanning machine. This machine takes a series of images using cameras and stitches them together into sort of a 3D model. Then a technician will go through that scanned image and verify that each component has been placed in the correct orientation. Now with the boards inspected, they are mounted into a machine that installs their initial software and firmware while also simultaneously checking to make sure that each sensor is operating correctly. With the firmware now installed, they move into the manual soldering process. This is when the technician will take the two halves of the board and solder them together. One half of the board being called the RX coil, which is sort of the receiving end of the wireless charging process that you'd keep on your nightstand. The other manual soldering process then combines the two PCBs with the battery, which is already shaped like the ring. With the battery attached, the electrical assembly is sort of complete, and now the assembly looks something like the letter J. This is when yet another technician will actually bend that flexible printed circuit board and shape it to fit inside each ring, depending on the size desired. Once the components are shaped and inserted into the metal shell of the ring, they are put in place using some adhesives. In order to keep the titanium finish of the shell free of scratches or damage, each ring is also wrapped in a special protective tape. If you're wondering, the titanium shells are mass manufactured and finished outside of this facility. Now with the printed circuit boards inside the ring, they are mounted to a special fixture, which can now inspect the functionality of the ring by using a proprietary app on a smartphone. Once it's confirmed that the ring is operating correctly, the rings are then inserted into a special flexible silicone mold. At this point, a clear hard resin is injected into the mold. This hard resin makes up the interior of the ring, which provides a smooth, skin-friendly surface for the ring to live on your finger. Once the silicone mold is opened, a technician carefully removes each ring and manually removes any excess 
excess resin. At this point, we're left with a nearly completed ring, but the hard resin inside still has a lot of rough edges and imperfections that need to be cleaned up. And that brings us to the next stop, the polishing process, where a series of technicians will use a combination of hand tools like a rotary grinder and sandpaper to remove all the excess hard material, and this will provide a smooth inner surface to the ring. I was really impressed by just how meticulous this process was and how much time was spent making sure the rings had no imperfections in a completely smooth interior. Finally, once each ring is polished, they are checked for their individual size on a special go no-go gauge that will ensure proper fit. And after the polishing and sizing is complete, the rings move into their final inspection process, where they're placed under a microscope type device and checked for any imperfections and sent back if they need to be cleaned up further. Finally, the ring is complete and it will now be packed into their corresponding boxes and ready to ship all over the world. I might be a nerd, but I really found this process fascinating, particularly by just how much attention was spent to detail throughout this entire process. And hopefully you found it interesting too. Hopefully you learned something today about assembly processes at least, and the Ultra Human Ring Air. And of course, as always, if you're interested in picking one of these rings up, I'll have a link in the description down below. I think I have a discount code or something like that, so go check that out. And then after you're done shopping down there, also make sure to drop into the comments down below and let me know what you thought of the tour of the factory here at Ultra Human and what part was interesting to you. And then after that, as always, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. And uh, I guess that's it. Signing out from here in Texas. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.